Praise the Lord. It's, it's a privilege to share the word of the Lord this morning. A pastor was preaching on this topic of prayer and he said, if you want to embarrass me, ask me about my prayer life. <laughs> he confessed that he really struggled in his prayer life. My prayer personal life is, is, is pathetic, it's sporadic. I pray more in public than in private, in my own devotion, because I'm too busy in ministry. Well, confession is good for the soul, but not so good for your reputation. <laughs> yes, it's good to confess, but here I want to just share a story about this confession. This preacher also talked about his confession and says that I was in the arm of another man's wife. <laughs> and so the congregation was shocked and asked, wow, what happened? And uh, he told them, oh, the, another man's wife is my mother. <laughs> uh, so an elder heard this, hey, it's very interesting. Huh? Can, can <laughs> provoke a lot of uh, thoughts. On, uh, just, just. So he, he wanted to imitate this uh, pastor when he went to another place to preach and so he also started off with congregation and, and saying that I've got confession to make also the other day I was in the arm of another man's wife and the congregation was in shock what, what happened suddenly his mind just went blank <laughs> he forgot I forgot who is the, <laughs> he got to refer to and so in panic, suddenly he remember, yes, it was my pastor's wife. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, oh, no, 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 it's, it's his mother. <laughs> so confession is good for your soul, but you must make sure you give a correct confession. Well, I just felt the Spirit leading and uh, guiding me to speak on this subject of prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. Effective praying. One of the main regrets most of our life in my personal life is to also this lack of prayer. So I come today with an L plate that I come as a learner. I want to learn more about praying. I want to go deeper with this desire to grow my prayer life. I want to tell the Lord, help me to practice what I preach and to preach what I practice. So let's come with this open heart and mind as we delve into this subject of praying. All of us need to pray more. Teach us to pray. May this be our hearts cry. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your precious word, which is living and active. We pray, Lord, as we hear your word, May it speak to us. Yes, speak, O oh Lord, for we are eager to hear from you, your spirit, to hear what your spirit has to say. Yes, teach us. Teach us to pray. May the word, the message here, Lord, and the meditations of our heart be acceptable. May they take root in our life and bear fruit in our character, in the change, in our conduct and conversation. Yes, let the word change us, transform us this morning. We commit all of us, all the hearers, that we will be doers of your word as well. We commit this thing in Jesus' name. We pray our God's people say, Amen. Amen. I want to begin by asking some self-assessment. How is your prayer life? We seldom ask one another this question. How is your prayer life? Sometimes we talk a lot about the word of God. Yes, but how about your prayer life? Is it struggling or are you satisfied? Is it satisfactory? So, so, la, how's your prayer life? So, so, la. But is, is it a significant part of your life and your living? Do you spend much time in seeking the presence of the Lord? Or are you just surviving? Uh, someone say, well, I pray three times a day. I pray for my breakfast, my lunch, my dinner. <laughs> 
that is not enough. All right? You're just surviving. But thriving is to delight and enjoy praying together. Is it boring? Is it a burden or a blessing? Sometimes we come together and we say, well, prayer meeting, not for me. It's so boring. But the reality is a lot of churches will face this issue or problem of prayer meeting, corporate prayer meeting. Very few people will attend. Is it boring? Is it a burden? Do you find it just a duty? Or is it a true blessing to have this privilege of praying together? Yes, it may be a duty, it may be a discipline, but let's take delight. Delight yourself in the Lord also, and He will grant you the desires of your heart. So let us pray for this delight in the presence of God. Let us pray that God will grant us the joy in His presence, the pleasures, pleasures forevermore. Yes, as we grow in our delight in the Lord, you'll find that our desires of our heart will also be the desires from, for the Lord, from the Lord. And so, build your prayer life upon this delight and joy of the Lord. So, to, to, to just develop this consistent prayer life. What is prayer to you? I like some of these uh, definitions uh, on prayer. Many of us who know that prayer is talking to God. But I like what this preacher says. Prayer is relational communication with God. It is based on a relationship. It is communication or dialogue with the Lord. Speaking, talking to God as well as hearing from the Lord, from the Word. And therefore you have a time of a meditation, waiting upon the Lord to hear from the Lord. Yes, we are to be trained to be discipled in this area. We are all to be enrolled in this school of prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. In the school of prayer, there should be progress. There should be promotion. It's so heartening to see our new believers who came to know the Lord recently. May you desire to grow in this prayer life, in our relationship with the Lord, and then you will continue to grow and develop, like from, from, from primary school to secondary school to tertiary. There are many aspects of prayer that we can learn to grow in. Yeah, it's a multifaceted. It can be as simple as ABC, but it can be as profound as, as XYZ. Yes, you can start with praying, Lord, help me, bless me. But we should grow into deeper prayer, knowing the Lord, even warfare prayer, wrestling with the Lord in prayer. May this be our heart's desire to grow and to develop our prayer life in the Lord. So prayer is relational communication with God. Yes, this is a relationship with God as the Father and we as His children. Communication here is two-way conversation. Hearing from Him and uh, His Word through the Spirit's prompting. Interacting with the Spirit, not just for you to talk and to ask and to present your request, but let there be like relational communication. But I like another word definition that uh, this gives us in terms of understanding prayer. Prayer is communion. It's based on our union with God. I like the word communion. Communion is deeper, going deep. Deep calls to the deep. Spirit to spirit. And when you have communion, it's your human spirit engaging with the Holy Spirit. Communion based on union with God. We, we know that as Christians, we are to abide in Christ, to remain in Christ as the vine. Remain, abide in me, and I in you. Both ways that we abide 
as well as we have Christ in us, then we will grow deeper in our prayer life. Prayer life is building up a friendship with Jesus. Jesus says in 15, 15, I do not call you servants anymore, John 15, 15. But I call you friends. And you need to build that friendship relationship with God. I like what Cory Ten Boom says, is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? Think about what, what it means. You know, when you drive, if prayer is your steering wheel, you will need it all the time to steer in the right direction, to guide you. You need the steering wheel. And prayer is that steering wheel. Yes, we ought to pray. Men ought always to pray. Yes, and not faint, not give up hope, not be discouraged. Is prayer your steering wheel or spare tire? Spare tire only you use when you are in an emergency, you know, in a crisis. So sometimes some people treat prayer as, as just only when crisis or when they have f emergency, then they cry out to God. So let prayer be our steering wheel and not a spare tire. Prayer is communion with God. Prayer is knowing God. In the Bible, the psalmist says, Lord, you search me. You know my thoughts from afar. You know my rising up. You are acquainted with me in all my ways. Yes. Even before a word is on my mouth, Lord, oh Lord, you know it. And the psalmist says, who else? And I was telling my wife, I think my wife also knows uh, my thoughts before I'm thinking of it and he knows my words before I speak. Why? Because of many years of Relationship, been married for 44 years. Wow. Yes, it takes time to build that kind of relationship. Praise God. So she always joked with me. She, she will have the last word. <laughs> but anyway, that, that is building, building that relationship. And we need to know that prayer is also keeping company with God in the presence, being in the presence of God. You know, Brother Lawrence of old, uh, the monk who's a cook, he would practice the presence of God. That's a phrase that he used. And uh, that is to be so aware of the presence of God. Wherever you go, whatever you do, be present in the presence of God. To know and be alert, aware, to be attuned to what the presence of God is there with you. And therefore, Keeping company with God is practicing the presence of God. Yes, let it be a close encounter of the spiritual kind. As we get to know God, prayer is, is an encounter, a spiritual encounter with God. It is an experience of the reality, of the presence of God. So may this be our heart's desire, to know God well to know him better. I like what Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 9, 23. This prophet says, the Lord himself said this, let not the wise man boast or glory in his, wis in his wisdom. Let not the strong man boast in his strength. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him who boasts, boast in this, that I am the Lord, that he knows me and he understands me. Wow. Isn't that what we want to know? Really know the Lord, to understand his will, his ways, that he, he is the one who exercises loving kindness, righteousness, and peace on earth. Yes, our God is great and mighty, but he has revealed himself and only when we come together in praying, in knowing Him, that we get to know Him deeper and closer. That is why this morning I just want to turn our attention to the aspect of praying. Lord, teach us to pray in Luke 11. Luke 11, 
Verse 1 says, Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. Teach us to pray. When we become with this attitude, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Not so much how to pray, not, not the art or the method of praying, but teach us to pray. You pray by praying, yes. Start growing and uh, learning to pray the way Jesus prayed. How did Jesus pray? Why did the disciples ask him? Didn't ask Jesus, teach us to preach, teach us to heal. You've healed many and teach us to perform miracles. But it's something something very distinct and distinguished in the way Jesus prayed, that the disciples were just prompted to ask, Lord, teach us to pray. The way we have seen you pray. Of course, Jesus, while he was on earth, was a man of prayer. He prayed. In fact, the Gospel of Luke recorded many a time how Jesus would always spend time praying. Baptism time was praying, when he was with, going to appoint the disciples, uh, the apostles, he spent all night prayer. So Jesus prayed. His practice is either early in the morning, before dawn, he would seek the presence of God. He would go to a separate place. He pray all night long. He would even fast and pray for 40 days. That was his practice, a man of prayer. Yes, and he always looked for a place. He would move out from the crowd, come away, come apart from the crowd. And he would go off to a solitary place, a quiet, secret place, apart from the crowd. He would go up to the mountain. He would go, down, go away to the wilderness. And he will be in a quiet garden. Just to be spending extended prayer, fellowship with God, his Father. Yes, his Father God. Yes, his place, his practice, his posture, he will be kneeling down to pray. He will be lifting his hands. He will be always looking up to heaven, giving thanks. That is his posture. He's always praying. A-S-A-P, always say a prayer. Not rushing here, eh? as soon as possible. No, just always say a prayer. Always stop and pray. A-S-A-P, remember that. Whenever you face difficult decisions or you want to make a choice, learn to just stop and pray. Pause and pray. P-A-P. -P. Pause. Just for a minute, a few seconds. Pause and pray. Yes, A-S-A-P. Well, you can think of all the ab <laughs> abbreviation. But that is, that is the prayer life of Jesus. He always had the passion. He was always filled with the Spirit. There was time of intim intimacy with God the Father when his presence of God came so close and he was transfigured. The glory of the Lord shone upon him. And there were times when he, he prayed in the garden, so intense, like sweat drops. So all these things impressed the disciples. And they, say, they, they, they just asked the Lord Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. This is our desire to pray. Of course, the Jews know how to pray. He said, pray as Jesus, as John taught his disciples. John, being a prophet, a teacher, would teach his disciples to pray. And similarly, the disciples, being Jews, they also learned to pray. But the kind of prayer is different. They must have felt the, the inadequacy in their own prayer life. And when they saw Jesus Christ, they just want to, to reach out to Jesus. Lord, teach us to pray like you pray, the way you pray. We want to go deeper. We want to learn, go, grow closer to the Lord in praying. And of course, Jesus taught them this prayer, right? Recognize the importance and intimacy of prayer. Yes, this is our desire today as we come. May this be in our heart's desire, really to know and to recognize the importance. Prayer is, is a great privilege, there's power in prayer. But yet, many of us 
fail to pray much. We, we lack the time. We have a lot of distraction, hindrances that we face, a lot of disruption, and so we do not spend much time in prayer. Let us recognize this importance of prayer, the intimacy of prayer. Let's want to grow deeper, closer to the Lord in our relationship with the Lord. So Jesus taught these disciples the Lord's Prayer, or more rightly, it's called the, the, the disciples' prayer, because this is what the disciples should pray. It's not Jesus praying for forgiveness and for all these things, but really, this is his prayer. We, we shall read, we shall declare and pray like this. The way Jesus taught them is, pray then like this, in this manner. It is meant to be um, a kind of a model prayer, a pattern for us to follow. And so, whenever we read through, let us go read with, with a prayerful heart, with an attitude that, that we are not just repeating these words. Because before, in Matthew, you, Jesus, remember, he says, do not be like the hypocrites and just pray in vain reputation. Vain reputation just means that you, you're just doing it without meaning it. Meaningless, even mindless. Do not think about what you're praying. You're just repeating, and regurgitating uh, the, the words there. But do not, the caution is, do not be like the hypocrites or the Pharisees who just go through vain reputation. But pray meaningfully. Yes, meaningfully, meditatively, and not just read through, but but we, we, we want to, together, let's pray this. It's, it's a family prayer, and let us pray this. And I will explain deeper to understand each of this aspect of the prayer. So together, let us pray then like this. Together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You recognize this is from Matthew 9, 6, verse 9 to 13. Uh, Luke Gospel of Luke has another version, a, a slightly shorter version, but it's essentially uh, a model prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. And you will find that uh, it, was, it was actually a, a separate occasion. In Matthew, it was part of the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus in Luke 11 was just responding to the request of the disciples, teach us to pray. But essentially it's the same prayer that uh, he taught us. And so we want to just unpack the words there so that we can understand, so that when we pray, I mean, when we pray corporately, yes, we just read out, recite it. But in our own quiet ways, when you pray, pause, contemplate on the meaning of those words, amplify it, add on and, and begin to understand what it means. So, I want to say that there, that there are seven P's, okay, seven aspects of this prayer life. Um, this is the pattern that Jesus taught his disciples. First, it starts off with our Father in heaven. It's not uh, meant to be your own personal, but it's, it's what Jesus taught. It's to be a family prayer, our Father, corporate, collective prayer. That's why when we come together, we can find this appropriate prayer. Our Father, we come as His children to know Him. He is our Father. We are our, His children. And the Bible says, we have received the spirit of adoption within us, crying out, Abba, Father. Until such time that Jesus taught them, many of the Jews will not call God Father. It's only after Jesus who 
became our Savior and brought us into the presence of God that we can call God our Father. The fatherhood of God is so important. Yes, beloved, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed, has lavished upon us that we should be called children of God. So when we come together, wow, this word, Father, is so precious. To call God our Heavenly Father. Abba God. Yes, let us recognize this precious term, a term of endearment. Because of our relationship, we can approach God and address Him as our Father. Our Father in heaven. Yes. Heaven is His foot, is His throne. That's what the psalmist said. And earth is His footstool. So God, while He is our Father, He is also we lofty, exalted in heaven. He is our heavenly Father. So we come with, with a term of endearment, of closeness, but yet we recognize, we want to respect, reverence God in heaven, Father in heaven. So this begins with praise. This Lord's Prayer will teach us to just come before the Lord to focus on God, who He is. He is our Father in heaven. And then to petition, hallowed be your name. Yes, hallowed be your name. It's, it's part of his praise. It's part of his uh, way of approaching God. We, 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 we don't use the word hallowed, but simply it means holy. Holy is your name. You know, oftentimes you read through Isaiah 6, Revelations, how does God describe himself? How do people ascribe God? They will say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and is to come. That is his attribute. His main attribute is holiness. He is pure. He is whole. And holy, holy, holy is sacred. It's to be set apart from common news. It's to be separate from others. So it is exalted above. His is a special, the highest honor. He said, holy is your name. Honor your name, Lord. We want to give you honor, highest honor. And the name there is so meaningful. The name represents his character, his personhood, who he is. We want to honor this name. And there are many attributes. In the Bible will be learned. That's one thing. That's why we, we get to know God through all the attributes that He is Elohim. He is our Creator. He is El Elyon, the Most High God. And He is El Shaddai, the Almighty. He revealed Himself through all the various names that uh, reveals the, the different aspects of His character, of His personhood. He is Jehovah, the provider. He is Jehovah Rapha, the healer. He is Jehovah Shammah, the one who is always present. He is Jehovah Shalom. Yes, above all, when we hallow the name as Christians, we can say He is Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. So when we come, we want to just honor that name. We want to lift up the name, the name of Jesus who gave us access, opened a new and living way through his body and the blood of Christ. Therefore, we want to come with this attitude as we begin praying. Praise you, God. Oh, holy is your name. We want to honor you. So think about all these things that you come to your mind that as you begin your Lord's prayer, yes, Jesus Christ, he is our Savior and our Lord. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, He is the Alpha and Omega. Think of all this to meditate, to just grasp a bit more of who God is and what His name represents. The next thing is the priority. 
Your kingdom come. Your will be done. First and foremost, seek the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God. In terms of priority, seek first. And foremost, most important, seek first His kingdom. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is His reign. It's where the king reigns and rules. So when we say, your kingdom come, we want to welcome his kingdom. Establish your kingdom in our hearts. Let, let you rule in our hearts and reign in our life. You are sovereign one. And therefore, we want to say, your kingdom come. Your will be done. We want to surrender to your will. Not my will, but your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So think of something when you make a decision, is it according to God's will, God's word, or is it just my will? Surrender, submit to his will, and therefore this is the first thing. You want to just let God be God in your life. Let him rule and let him reign. Let his will be done, not my will. Then the next thing is, Give us this day our daily bread. Give us today, day by day, our bread, our daily needs. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. God promises that your daily needs, your daily bread will be met. God did not say, I will supply your, your greed, but just your need, all right? Your necessities in life. God promised to supply, not according to your greed or your wants, but truly what you need. So he is Jehovah Jireh. Just thinking of this is God, you are the provider. Next is pardon, forgiveness. Forgive us our sins, our debts, as we forgive those who sin against us. Forgive as we forgive others. It's so important for us. Because we are already forgiven, therefore we can forgive. As we are forgiven, let us forgive. Forgive others before God will forgive. That, that is the, the essence of this verse. Forgive us our sins as we forgive others. Yes, we have to forgive others first. And God will say, I'll oh, forgive you. This aspect of forgiveness is so important. In fact, in Luke, he will go on to explain about more about forgiveness. If you don't forgive, how can God forgive you? And then he give a parable, all right? Parable of forgiveness, of your persistence in prayer. So forgive, because we are already forgiven by God. Pardon and protection. Protection is, lead us not into temptation. It's to keep us away. Keep us away from temptation. Help us. Do not expose us to all this lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Protect us, O Lord. Yes, you are our guardian. You are our keeper by day, by night. Guide us, guide us away from temptation. So there's protection, there's power, power, and deliver us from evil. Some versions, the evil one, the devil, deliver us. We are given the power to overcome, to be delivered from evil and the evil one. So this is part of all the Lord's Prayer. And the last one, last one is important for us to proclaim, your kingdom come, your will be done. Yes, yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. This is a proclamation we want to decree and declare. Yes, your kingdom, let it be over our life, over our nation. Power, your power and your glory. So all these things, I put it as seven Ps in the Lord's Prayer. It's a pattern for us. It's a model. It's a framework for us to sort of uh, 
structure for us to build our prayer life. But just as I say in Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, you find that it's a caution. Guard against just vain reputation. We can be just praying this meaninglessly, but we need to give much thought, pray meaningfully. Mean what you pray, pray what you mean. And therefore, may this Lord's Prayer, it's good to use this Lord's Prayer, but it's better if you just understand it and meditate on it, apply it for your prayer, all the aspects, what you should pray for. Yes, God's will be done, God's kingdom. So this is how the Lord Jesus taught the disciples to pray. I want to move on. Move on then to effective praying. And this is a verse that I, I want to just highlight that we can uh, memorize it, we can pray it. It's from James chapter 5, verse 16b. All right, the second part of verse 16. Here, the New King James Version says, The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Effective, fervent. Let me just look at some other versions that say, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. This is a good amplification from the New Living Translation. Earnest prayer, not haphazard, not casual, but the earnest, fervent prayer of a righteous person has great power, effective produces wonderful results, has great effect, and is productive, it produces wonderful results. Another version puts it this way, the, the Passion Translation says, tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. I find this also very meaningful, explanation, amplification of this verse. Tremendous power is released through the passionate, passionate, heartfelt prayer. Wow. Your prayer is passionate. Does it come from a heart? Or do we just mouth the words without meaning much from our heart? Praying heartfelt, passionate prayer of a godly believer. Of course, sometimes we, we say, Lord, I'm not righteous. But we are not talking about that kind of righteousness. Here we talk about the righteousness of God. Our position in Christ Jesus, we are the righteousness of God. Righteousness involves being right, believing right. Yes, just like Abraham believed and it was counted to him as righteousness. Believing is part of it. You start off by believing that Christ died for us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. We in Christ, the righteousness of God. This is our positional righteousness. And of course, it should go into practice, into right behaving, right doing. And we, we, we recognize all of us who are Christians in Christ, we, are, we have received the righteousness we have inherited, and it says the Bible says the righteousness of God is imputed upon us, is given to us, is imparted upon us, and we are to live right, righteously. Yes, this is what God desires. He practices righteousness. That's what He says. Yes, what does the Lord require of you? Yes, to walk humbly. Yes, to to do right, do justice and to walk humbly before the Lord. So let us, by faith, just claim that in Christ, by the blood of the Lamb, we are coming to seek, we are standing in His righteousness so that we can pray effective praying, effective praying, and uh, really recognize that our prayer has tremendous impact. Another version, Amplified Version says this, the heartfelt and persistent prayer 
of a righteous man, a believer, can accomplish much when you put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and it can have tremendous power. Dynamic power. Yes, it's effective, productive. Effective praying is so important. Many people say, I don't pray much because I don't sense the power, the effectiveness of praying. I think you know, one of the greatest motivation for us to pray is answered prayer. We recognize that God hears our prayer, but God also answers our prayer. Not maybe according to what we desire, according to what we want, but God answers prayer in His own way. If it's not time yet, God will say, slow, slow, another time. Sometimes it may be no. Sometimes it may be not in time. Slow down. Wait upon the Lord. Sometimes it may be through difficult times. He says, grow, grow. We grow in our prayer life, even through trials and difficult times. But we continue to pray because God hears our prayer. Our prayers, the Bible says, are gathered as incense we know that our prayers are gathered in incense towards heaven. And uh, each time as we come to pray, let us, let us believe that our prayer matters and uh, we want to pray deeper and closer to the Lord. Pray effectively. Let us ask God to help us. And one of the most effective ways to pray is to pray in the Spirit. Holy Spirit, teach us to pray. The disciples asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. But for us, we want to personalize and ask the Holy Spirit to teach us to pray. Just two scripture verses, okay, from Romans chapter 8. Would you read with me these verses 26 and 27? All right, together. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Wow. The Spirit helps us, first of all. He is our helper. And he helps us in our weakness. We recognize, many of us recognize we are weak in our prayer. Recognize that, we, that the Spirit can help us in our infirmity, in our limitations, because we may not know what to pray or even how to pray, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us. And even with groanings, with deep words, too deep for words. And because the Holy Spirit knows and searches the heart, knows what's the mind of the Spirit, he is the one who can intercede for us according to the will of God. So praying the Spirit is so important. Praying in the Spirit is engaging your human spirit with the Holy Spirit. We know that the Holy Spirit indwells all of us as believers, as Christians. Yes, the Holy Spirit lives in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so when we want to pray in the Spirit, we to pray by the Spirit, to pray and engage our, our human spirit with the Holy Spirit. We know that as human beings, we, we, we are made of spirit, soul, and body. We, we are spirit being. And we have a soul and we live in a body. We are spirit being. Recognize that. And when we want to pray in the Spirit, we really need to engage our human spirit with the Holy Spirit, spiritual praying and depending on Him. It's, it's, it's to be moved, and to be guided by the Spirit and to pray in, in agreement with the prompting of the Spirit, in, in alignment to the word, word of God, in alignment to the will of God. Praying in the Spirit involves us truly to be in sync with the Spirit. 
to have that harmony and the help of the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Spirit is not equivalent to praying in tongues. Praying in tongues is an expression of praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit may go deeper and wider, more encompassing, but it's very much involved in speaking in tongues as well. Praying in tongues helps us to go deeper. And, and uh, I think many of us need to learn to grow. I, I come together to, to share that we, we need to grow in this area of praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues. When we gather together, let us learn to allow the Spirit to pray in us, pray in this spiritual language or prayer language of praying in tongues. Praying in the Spirit may not be be just directly praying in tongues, but it's more than that, all right? It's engaging your human spirit, but it's often expressed through praying in tongues. And this is something that, as a church, we want to put into more practice when we gather together to pray. Another verse is in Ephesians 6.18. Again, this phrase, pray in the spirit. Remember, Ephesians 6 talks about putting on the armor of God. We have the helmet, we have, we have the breastplate of righteousness, helmet of salvation, the, the belt of truth, and then we, we have shoes shot with peace and the gospel of peace, and then we have the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit. All these are part of the armor of God, but verse 18 is also the part of the armor. It is the energy, the strength to put on this armor of God. And so he says, pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the lost people. So while you engage in spiritual warfare, you will want to put on the armor of God. Recognize that this is the most important part. You need the energy, the strength, and the power. And so we say, pray in the Spirit. Paul says, pray, pray in the Spirit you know, on all occasions, always, with all kinds of prayers and requests. Yes. In praying with us in the Spirit, we can pray with all kinds of, all kinds of prayer. You can think of A-C-T-S. Adoration, praying, praising God. A, adoration. C, confession. All kinds of prayer you always begin with confessing shortcomings to. Request, okay. A, C, T, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Gratitude. Enter his presence with thanksgiving. With the attitude of gratitude. Always give thanks. Yes, and then supplication. All kinds of prayer. A, C, T, S also helps us to remember that we ought to pray all these aspects of praying, making your request, your petition, your supplication before the Lord. So I just want to pause here and uh, ask somebody to share a short testimony. Uh, we have in our house church a group of intercessors and uh, I, I really appreciate the unity of praying together through WhatsApp, we share prayer items and when we come together uh, and this brother is our brother Ricky. Ricky is an encourager. He is the one who always helps us to uh, mobilize us and motivate us to pray, especially praying in the spirit and praying in tongues. He is, together with Luis, our intercessors in our prayer group too. Uh, be with David and myself. But I want him to share because I find that he has really been able to be used by the Lord to encourage others in a prayer life, to activate. So Brother Ricky, come forward and uh, give him a... <laughs> Thank God he's a dear brother and uh, he has been used by the Lord in encouraging others, activating. Come, share, share. Praise God. Wow, I'm a little bit nervous I come here. 
Yeah, I just want to talk about my personal life on prayer. Prayer is very interesting. Prayer is to touch God. Prayer is to be in union with Him. Prayer is to enjoy Him. I be enjoy Him all, every morning. I cannot do without prayer. I want to enjoy Him. Usually what I do is then, I will use Psalm 100 verse 4. Before prayer, I will declare who God you are. About two, three minutes, you have to be entered into this holy of holy. When I do that, Lord, you are the God Almighty, you are Alpha and Omega, you are the great I am. About two minutes, then I move in again with thanksgiving. Thanks God for the family, for my life, for the church, for the elders. I keep on thanks Him another two, three minutes. His presence will be start moving again. Then I praise Him, Lord, I praise you for the sun, for the moon. So I spend this about five, ten minutes. You will sense the presence of God. You are, you are you are sanitize the atmosphere, then I can also sense the angel with me. So this is one. Then second thing is that I have a book, yellow book. Then I will start a conversation prayer with the Lord. Lord, last night I cannot sleep well. This is this. I will talk to him, this and that. Then I say, Lord, like, uh, like for example, uh, I would have believed asked me to share. What shall I do? Conversation prayer. Then I pray in the spirit. I pray in understanding. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15 is so powerful. Then I pray in the spirit. And then the word comes. What by faith, not by sight. Then I move in again. What to share? This and that. So I just sense in my life, uh, the Lord wants to share my experience in prayer. So what I'm trying to say is that you, 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 all the time my life is the conversation prayer is so powerful. Even in the toilet, even shower, even you are driving, Speak to God, conversation prayer, become a heavy, uh, 24 or Greek 7. Conversation prayer, I find is very powerful. Then that after I finish, really, I will take the book, I go into a faith proclamation. Faith proclamation according to uh, 1 Peter 1.23, we are born not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, true and by the word of God. I speak to my body, I faith proclamation, maybe about 10 minutes, who, uh, faith commission, and I do a lot of declaration, decree and declare. Decree and declare uh, about my health, about everything. So I decree and declare, I really move into the spirit. Then I, then I pray in tongue, then I, that sense I want to worship. I take the guitar, then I sing a song. When I sing the end tongue, I enter the holy or holy again. So what I'm trying to say is enjoy Him. God wants us to enjoy Him. You have to move into the holy or holy and press on. Then after that, he will begin to speak to you. Uh, then what I learned is that you go in as a king, you stand in, in front of Jesus as a prophet, you hear the word, you come out as a king. So when I go in holy or holy, I say, Lord, here am I. Speak your word. He will speak to you. My speaking to him is a prompting. I just want to share with you, there's a, there's a personal altar there is two. One is that if you have a fixed place, Let's say about I wake up at 15, I will go to the, this is called outer prayer. They got outer, 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 they got inner, outer. Outer prayer is a fixed place, and the sometimes you sit there. If you do that about two weeks, huh, trust me, the moment you sit there before your prayer, you can sense the presence of God already. Because the angel, all these are sur surround you, they are start wanting to do the prayer and activate with you. I want to experience that. The other one is a personal altar, it's inward. Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Luke 17, verse 21, 1 John 4, verse 4, uh, 1 John 4, the greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Then 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 21, don't you know that? Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, whom Holy Spirit dwell in you. You are bought for the price, therefore worship God in your body, in your spirit, which is God. So another personal altar is 24 oblique 7. Everywhere you go, you can have a family altar. This is amazing because the Holy Spirit lives in us. Hallelujah. So, so prayer is 24 of week 7. Uh, I, then another altar is a family altar. When my children come back home, we have a family altar. We worship God. We pray together. Then we pray for one another. We pray for the church, especially for the four elders and elder we, for the family. Wow, Lord, I can sense your presence again. Oh, Karaka, Shinka, Parahaka. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So, what I'm trying to say, personal order, you can sense His presence. He will speak to you every time. So, this is important. So, the, the Lord really urged us because 
during, during this time, many family Satan are attacking the family quite drastically. So really, we have to pray for your family, protect your family. Try to have family, especially husband and wife. Pray every day. Hold hand and pray. Pray for five, ten minutes. Cover the children, cover your ministry, cover everyone. Father, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. This is personal author, Vivian. God will speak to you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Ricky. Yes, the R family, Ricky, Rebecca, Rachel, Renette, <laughs> Regan. Thank you. We thank God for bringing them to CMC, from FCBC to CMC. And uh, we really appreciate their family togetherness. And that's why in house church, we, 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 we enjoy the dynamic relationship in our prayer life. But really, God in his mercy has called us to, to pray together. Two years ago, because of the lockdown, lockdown actually the side benefit is we, we, we have a lot of Zoom meeting, we pray together, we have our 40-day prayer and also the global prophetic prayer. I want to just say that when, when you hear a sermon on prayer, may, you, may the Spirit prompt us to want to grow deeper, to be more united in praying together. Yes, we want to pray together. Prayer in united collective prayer, there's power in unity. And uh, when we come together, pray aloud, pray in one accord. That is the greatest impact for us. When you come together to pray, it's not time for us to be in silent prayer, but pray aloud and uh, pray in the spirit. Those who can, uh, this should be our desire. More and more of us should desire to pray in the spirit. We have a Wednesday night prayer group, global prophetic prayer group. The ladies, wow, they are great intercessors. Uh, Sister uh, Lydia, Vivian, and uh, Lynn, and uh, Jenny, under Pastor Bundy. We gather together to pray. We continue. This is from the global prophetic prayer watch. But we want to encourage uh, more people to come forward. We want to build up a group of intercessors, or we call them MPs. These are ministers of prayers, MPs, and uh, intercessors who really want to spend more time interceding. And they, they, they will help us to build up our prayer life. Yeah, we, we, we really want to urge some of you, if you can, really to pray about this ministry of intercession. And... Uh, Sister Bundy, Pastor Bundy will help us to coordinate and build up more intercessors. So as a church, we thank God for those prayer movement. Two years ago, many people were involved in praying through all these various prayer groups. But we want to pray, Lord, revive us again. Let us pray. Pray in agreement, pray in unity. The church is to be called a house of prayer for nations. So we gather together. I want to encourage you also to join house church. We find it so important that in small group, we have uh, prayer partners to give mutual support. Thank God for WhatsApp. Thank God for Zoom. There's so easy way for us to engage together to pray. Anytime we just put on WhatsApp and you see the responses in our, in our house group, People really pray. We have discovered intercessors in our midst. Our sister Sarah, she was, she's not here this morning, but she's really an intercessor. She will see visions. And, will, and, and, and so in this area of praying, may, may, may the Spirit stir our hearts. Let us have that hunger just to really want to grow deeper, to grow closer to the Lord. Yes, to know God more and more in our personal prayer life. Let this be the impetus for us. That's just one closing verse. First Peter 4, 7 and 8. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. The end of all things is at hand. You're living in the last days the end time, and 
Here it says, be self-controlled and sober-minded. Be serious. Be dis disciplined. Devote yourself to praying. Be watchful and thankful. Be deliberate. Be diligent. Yes, be intentional in our prayer life. Be watchful. Be watchful is to be vigilant. To know what's happening. Next week, Dr. Daniel will speak more about end times. And uh, we have want to encourage us because of this, we need to really spend more time to be in prayer, to be sober-minded, to build up our prayer life. And then, above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Yes, keep love, loving one another earnestly. We may go through some tough times. We may be discouraged and disappointed with people. Whatever it is, let us keep loving one another. Love covers a multitude of sin. So, as we continue towards the end of this year, Yes, it's been a great year for us, but we really want to deepen our corporate prayer life. Every Friday, uh, first Friday of the month, we have what we call the corporate prayer meeting. So this Friday, coming Friday, we want to encourage you to join us. Very few of you join us. Uh, it's a time for us as a church, especially as members, may you feel the kind of obligation the duty that you ought to come together to pray, pray in unity for the church. The church is, is a transition stage and where we want to see breakthroughs. And so we really urge more people to come. Join us on Friday. Now we're just going through Zoom. Zoom is so accessible, so easy for us. You just join in and there will be breakout rooms. Uh, you can get to know one another in a smaller group to pray. But the main thing is just come together to pray. Yes, may I really f encourage all of us, all of us to devote ourselves to prayer, to really make it an intentional, a focused prayer, Lord, to, to, to experience the power of prayer together as a church. So that's why I feel that it's really the Spirit needs to touch us again, revive us again, Lord, for our prayer life. We, we had that experience. Yes, we want to come back again and be saturated in prayer, be soaked up in His presence and truly experience breakthrough. So may, may we continue to seek His face and let this song that we, we, we sang just now, Spirit, touch your church. Touch your church. And uh, we need your grace and your mercy, Lord. We need to pray like never before. We need the power of your Holy Spirit to open heaven's door. So Spirit, touch your church. Stir the hearts of men. Revive us, Lord, with your passion once again. I want you to care for others like Jesus cares for me. Let your rain fall upon me. Rain upon me, Holy Spirit. Yes, we pray humbly come before you. We don't deserve what you ask, but we yearn to see your glory restore this dying land. So teach us, touch us, stir our hearts, revive us with your passion once again. May we sing this song and uh, mean it with all our heart. And then we want to open a time for us. I feel that the Spirit of the Lord is moving in our midst. We want your spirit of intercession to come upon us to really stir us up and to make that commitment to really pray. If you have been praying for five minutes, pray ten minutes. Come together to pray as a church. Join in as a group. Join a house church. If you do not know who, which house church, come approach us elders or Pastor Bundy and Sister Janice. We want to assign you to house church and uh, in the house church, you really can be involved in praying. All right? So let us sing the closing song, and then we'll close in prayer. And uh, we want to open the altar uh, for all who really desire to be
prayer intercessors to have the spirit of intercession to move in us, to fill us afresh. I want to ask some of our intercessors to come forward, those who are regular intercessors. Let us come and as we gather in front here, pray for our church to move in the power of the Holy Spirit afresh. And those, those who desire to pray in tongues to come forward, a few of us leaders will pray for you for the baptism of the Spirit and uh, you will really learn to pray in spirit, in tongues as well. So let us stand together. Let us sing this song, Spirit, Touch Your Church. And I'll open the time. You can come forward as you sing this song to just pray and the leaders, elders, and intercessors to come forward. Dr. Dr. Daniel, come forward also. Elders, uh, let's come and let's stand before the people. Let's continue in singing this song as well as to pray for our people together.